All right, so today we're going to be going over a MacBook Air that has a question mark folder. I've tried two different SSDs, and it still gives a question mark folder. I'm going to put it up here. The battery's not plugged in, so I don't want to... Oh, well, too late. You should have seen that there was a question mark folder there. If you didn't, you can rewind. Or you can just trust me that I'm not trying to scam you. So we're going to try and figure out why it is that there's a question mark folder, even when we put a good SSD with a good operating system into this MacBook Air. Now, a couple of things to announce here. So on that site that you see below, which is right yeah, 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 here, so this site, we've added a bunch of new parts, a bunch of new tools. We've added... Uh, yeah, so all these different components for all these different uh, MacBooks, all these different iPhones. We've added stencils. We've added all sorts of stuff. So you should check it out if you're looking to, looking to buy any type of parts, chipsets, stuff like that. And yeah, now let's go on to taking a look at this board. So what is it that we're going to look for if we're not getting the SSD showing up? So the first thing that I'm going to be interested in is, is there power? So let's check and see if there is power. Let's see. Lewis, have you heard about right to repair b uh, bill hearing in Massachusetts? I have, and I actually called them twice yesterday to ask about... I called them twice yesterday to ask whether or not I'm allowed to stream from there, because if I am, I will show up and I will stream the hearing. Still waiting to hear back. If I don't hear back today, I'm probably going to call and bother them again tomorrow just to see. But... The site below is, no, the site below is rossfordgroup.com. Mofo. Uh, what's up with the Time Warner crap? I, I have zero drop frames, man. Trust me, that'll change very soon. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is see power to the SSD. Aaron is correct. So let's go over the schematic and find out what's going to power the SSD. So the SSD plugs in a J3700. This is the amazing software by Paul Daniels, if you don't have this software and you're still using TP-Link, you should check out the link below at pldaniels.com. You'll be able to find the software and also give them a few bucks. You ship stuff yourself or drop ship from the site. 99% of it, if we ship ourselves. If it's something that we drop ship, it'll say on it that it drop ships. So the only, even the ultrasonics, as you can see, the, well, the ultrasonics <laughs> is, are, are stored in our warehouse here uh, as, as, as neatly as possible. But like some of the other model ultrasonics are drop shipped. We don't, we don't stock every single one. But the most common one that I recommend you buy, we do stock, and that uh, ships usually same day. But all those parts on there, if it says that we, sh if it does not explicitly state that we, that it's, is, is it going to take a long time, then it ships from here. It's like 99.9% .9 of the site ships from here. Anyway, so where are we here? Ah. So SSD connector. So J3700. J3700. What would you recommend if I need something more powerful than a ThinkPad? There is nothing more powerful than a ThinkPad P70, is there? I mean, you can get that with the Quadro 6000. I'd say that's pretty powerful. All right, so on the, this is here is the SSD connector. And let's see if we can find SSD power. So SSD power is going to be PP3V3 SOSW SSD goes to this coil L3700, which then goes to the SSD connector. Hey, Chris, how's it going? I'm glad somebody has been streaming while I've been taking time off. Okay, so where are we going to find L3700? So L3700 is going to be over here. Is that chip meant to be that shape? I'm not sure which chip you're discussing, but if it's in the microscope, most likely it is. Okay, so we're going to plug this in to turn it on. Turn on my multimeter with my nice little overlay here. Great work, fully really helpful videos. Thank you to Apple Surgery. I appreciate that. And let's turn this on. Where's data logger? Here we go. Data logger is on. All right, so we're going to put this meter in serial mode. And what do we get? We get 3.3 .3 volts at the coil. Fuck. So not an easy one. All right, next up, next up, what comes next? So the next thing we need is to see if the SSD over here is getting its reset signal. So over here, we have SSD reset L, and when that signal is low, the SSD will be in reset mode, a.k.a. not work. So if you don't know what a reset button or you don't know what reset signal means, Matt, take, your, uh, you know, take a screwdriver, touch it to the reset button on your desktop computer. I don't know why I said screwdriver. I guess it's because a lot of these modern desktop cases, they have the reset button where you can barely press it with your finger. 
Yeah, press the reset button while your computer is on and hold it down. The computer is still going to be on. It's, the fans are still going to be spinning. Power is going to be going through it, but it's not going to actually do anything because it's stuck in the reset mode. So over here, underscore L means signal is present when the voltage is low, and reset means reset mode. So if this is zero volts or something really or close to zero volts, then it's, the SSD is going to be in reset mode and not working, which means it's fucked. Thank you to Crimson Dove. I appreciate that. Sex Toy Mini just started. I'm glad your streaming would be less painful. Uh, for those of you who know, but, uh, so Jessa at Practical Board Repair School, when she teaches, she gives people a, t uh, an iPad Mini that was a data recovery for this company that sells sex toys because that's what Jessa's into. And she re recovered the data from it, but then it was such a good example that she uses it as an example of how to find and work around a short circuit. And I'm not going to spoil it by telling you what the problem is with it because I don't know if her students are watching, but you can typically tell the intelligence level of the class by how long it takes them to collectively solve it if they are able to collectively solve it. Luckily, while I was teaching with Jessa, most of the classes were able to collectively solve the problem fairly quickly. But from what I hear, eh, may not exactly always be the case. Anyway, Jess has much more patience than I do when it comes to this whole teaching thing. I, 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 I don't have patience for that much at all anymore. So let's see. So we need to find SSD reset L, which is going to show up on U3740. So if we check U3740, oh, God, software just went nutsy over there. Okay, U3740, pin 3 right over here. So let's find pin 3. 3.32 volts. So the reset signal is high, which means there is no reset. Now, you never know. This chip could not be doing its job. Let's just make sure that the reset signal that comes out of it and goes to the SSD connector is present so that the reset will not happen. SSD reset con L. That is going to be present on pin 4. And as we can see over here, that is present. Fuck. Lame. Okay. So as you know, we don't get any easy stuff anymore. This came from a school that has their own IT department, and I'm guessing that they... Hmm, I wonder if they did anything to this. By the way, if you do, uh, if you are a member of some large organization, public school, private school, and they have, you work with Apple products, we do buybacks of stuff that is off lease. We also do repairs uh, for, for schools. There's one school here, I think it's uh, Fieldston or something, but yeah, there's, there's quite a few schools that we work with here, and we are starting to work with more of them around the country, particularly in buying stuff. So if you are some kind of, if you deal with the IT equipment for any of the schools in your area, and you're usually just throwing the stuff away. Psst. We might pay you money for it. So call us. Anyway, uh, let's. So th th this is this is probably gonna suck. So I'm gonna take the SSD out. The next thing I'm gonna do is inspect the connector. I'm gonna inspect the connector. Um, it's probably gonna look fine. And of course, it looks fine. Why would there be a problem with the connector? Why would it be something simple? <laughs> Fucking piece of shit. Okay, let's see. Is there are any of the probe points by the SSD bad? Any of the signals going to the SSD? Maybe not making it there? Oh, come on. Seriously? Stop. Come on. Where, oh, where was my little hint gone? Where, oh, where could they be? None of these probe points even look nasty. Man, this is going to suck. Right, let's look around this area, since this is where SSD power is, and it's immaculate, of course. This is looks like somebody's probe there before. Fail. All right, so let's see. Who can tell me on this machine what interface is used for the SSD? So for this SSD, what interface is used? Excellent video as usual. Thank you to Guy. Is the JTAG already removed? Well, the JTAG connector is still there, but it doesn't look bad. And we are going to break the rules and not remove the JTAG connector just this once because it generally seems like there's nothing wrong with it. What are your thoughts on Clevo laptops? I haven't used them enough. I know that Duke is not a fan of Clevo. Duke is not a fan of Clevo. 
So I trust Duke's opinion, so I wouldn't be a fan of Clevo. But I have not, I have not had any, much experience with them. I'm a biologist, and I love to see your videos. Awesome. Yeah, okay, so what interface? M2. Now, M2 is a slot, not an interface. So M2 can use SATA. M2 can use PCI Express. Remove all JTAGs. How's the reliability of crash shipping these days? Oh, it's awful. That's why I stock this stuff. So the, the, there's a bunch of cleaners there. There's some behind the speaker that you can't see because I'm in the way. Crest's shipping is, is a disgrace, which is why uh, I stock the most popular one, and we ship those cleaners the same day that you buy them from the store, not from Crest. So that, that I recommend if you want to buy one, the P500H45. That's the model that's the, most, the closest one to the one I have. If you buy any of the other models, then you get to wait for Crest to ship it to you, and you don't, you don't want to do that, just, just being honest. All right, so what interface do we use here? Let's see. Who has the answer? Yeah, we have Chris Long, Michael Oberdick, TCRS. We have the entire team here. This is great. And no, and, and no, no troll yet. PCI, exactly. PCI Express, very good. Close enough. PCI Express is the interface. Thank you to Apple Surgery. You always want to say you want to hear about success. Thanks to you, I opened a shop and done plenty of iPhones and MacBooks. Thank you very much for all this work that you have done, the, you done to learn all the world. Well, wh where is your shop? Put it, put it in the chat. I'd love to see. That is awesome. Not M2 because Apple is a jerk. Indeed, this, SSD, this SSD, did I just say SSD? Oh, man, I'm losing it. I need to get some food. This SSD is indeed not M2 because Apple are indeed a bunch of jerks. They could have made this an M2 SSD, and it could have been very fast, but no. But uh, yes, it is a PCI Express SSD. STS. Hey, by the way, I shipped your order today. I, have a, I put a note in the package for you. Uh, thank you to STS. He, STS Telecom bought chips for me. I am honored. Thank you. Seriously. Uh, the stars of the iPhone repair world bought chips for me this week. The YouTube stars of the iPhone repair world. Anyway, so let, let, let's get back to work here. So the, uh, this is going to be an issue with PCI Express. So... As you can see, there is a capacitor. <laughs> There's a capacitor <laughs> on every single one of the PCI Express lines. This is funny. So look at this. So I have to check C3710, C3711, DC3712, 13, 14, 15, 16, bloody, bloody, poor shit. So let's check that. C3710, C3711, C3712. Now, this is going to suck. Now, I'm not going to measure all these because that's going to take up a lot of time. I'm just going to take a look at them. And from what I see here, it looks like they're fine. Now, I may come back and actually remove these from the board to measure them, which is not something that I want to do because it's very time-consuming. You can't really measure capacitance when something's on the board. It just doesn't work that way. With resistance, and this is something that people bring up all the time, like, Lewis, how are you measuring the resistor when it's in the circuit? That's wrong. Well, a resistor typically fails by becoming a higher resistance than what it's supposed to be. When, uh, but when you measure a resistor that's in a circuit with other stuff, typically, since there's other things in parallel, the resistance would go lower. So if the resistance goes higher, I know there's something wrong with my resistor because when you're measuring a resistor in a circuit, it can only potentially go lower, not higher. So there, I'm not getting an exact reading, but I don't care for the exact reading. I just want to know if it failed. Whereas measuring a capacitor in circuit, that's just not happening properly. You can measure if a capacitor has shorted in diode mode, but again, you're not really measuring the capacitor, you're measuring everything on that line. But in order to properly measure a capacitor, you actually have to remove it from the board, and I don't wanna fucking do that. So I'm not, I'm not all I was doing here was just looking for, for the physical inspection. And over here, I'm going to just for, for time's sake, make the guess that all of these capacitors over here are good. Again, if I can't figure, now I'm gonna move on to the next step in the troubleshooting. If Everything else I do to troubleshoot this board does not give me an idea of why the SSD is not working. I may then return and check every single one of those caps. But I'm not going to do that at this point in the troubleshooting because if I do that, I'm going to give up on all the other stuff that I could check because I'm going to lose my mind at the, and lose patience taking each cap off the board, doing this with them with the multimeter probes, cursing as they fall off my desk. And we're going to save that as the last resort. 
not going to do that right now. Waste of time. Let's check everything else that we could possibly check. Because, again, if there's an easy problem, I want to figure it out before going for the, the nightmare stuff. So let's just, I'm going to search for PCIe, and I'm going to keep looking and see if there's something that's obvious. So let, let's go to another page, because screw, screw this one. Maybe there's something else for PCI Express on this board. All right, so over here, it looks like this is U3900. This is for the camera. I don't give a shit about the camera, so we're just going to fast forward. U3900 looks like it's for the camera. See over here, camera one of two, Apple Inc. Notice of we want Lewis to help people fix stuff over there. I'm sure that's, that's, that, that, that's probably what they're going for. They just, you know, like no, notice of we want Lewis to fix our machines and show people how to on the Internet. That's... So nice of you, Apple. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's continue. Uh, so oh, we're going to go past the U3900 because this chip is for camera. I don't care about camera. Did you reseat the SSD? That, just, just no. No. I bet Jessica can fix this faster. Yeah, but then, then, you, then I don't get to walk you through the solution. That's no fun. Making a new website in my store is in UK, though. I'll make a video to help people like you are doing, but also in Polish. I hope you will like it. Well, if it's in Polish, I may not understand any of it, but I'm sure people in Poland will, and they will say thank you. Okay, let's... Come on, move past this page. PCI Express. So these are a bunch of capacitors, but these are in PCI Express for the camera. I don't care about the camera. Fuck the camera. This laptop is used at the school. They shouldn't be using the camera anyway. No selfies in class, mofo. Okay. Is there anything telling? Anything else related to PCIe? Uh, have you ruled out a bad SSD? Yes, I tried two different SSDs so far. Now, granted, I could have two bad SSDs, but I don't think that's it. Uh, da, da, da. Ah, this is painful. No components. This is this is a click orgy. What does the report that comes in with the board say? It says doesn't work. Lewis never gives me sweet notes. Chris Long, I haven't seen you buy anything. Else. I'd give you a sweet note. Uh, this is a lot of clicking, man. You hear that? Let's zoom out a little so I can. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of uh, freaking clicking. Okay, so what's this? PCH VCCIO bypass. H PCI Express had a USB 3 power. Well, those are just capacitors to ground, and that rail is probably present because if PP1V05 SOSW wasn't present, it wouldn't be turning on. So, okay, what's this? SSD clock request underscore L. Huh. What's that? Let's check that. That sounds important. I'm going to check that. Next. Bam. Oh, that's present on this chip, so that's probably going to be fine since we already checked that area. Okay, so that's going to be present on U3740. That's what creates the SSD reset signal that we were measuring for earlier. Zero drop frames. Yeah. That, um, trust me, I'm as surprised as you are there. Okay. There's no multimeter scratch there, so I don't think somebody measured that yet. Maybe that is going to be gone. And fuck, it's not. Lame. Hello from a core boot T520 user. Oh, you still have a proper keyboard and trackpad. I'm jealous. I am jealous. Oh, this this is gonna suck. 
All right, let's continue. Why is there no SSD? Our clock request is there. Our reset signal is there. Our power is there. You're not going to be a bad CPU, are you? You wouldn't be a bad CPU. Ah, oh, Jesus. PCH Thunderbolt PCI Express Reset. I don't care about that. I don't care about Thunderbolt. Nobody here cares about Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt Reset. I don't, I care a little about that. I care so little about that. Uh, what was that? That sounded painful. Yeah. We're just going to keep scrolling. Thunderbolt reset. Don't care. Airport. Don't care. And we're back at the SSD. That can't be right. There's got to be more to it than this. Nobody cares about Thunderbolt. Of course we don't care about Thunderbolt. They voted down TriStar in a free spray and are checking out the lines in the top corner of the PMIC. I'm not going to tell Justice Class how to fix it. Wait, so there's a clock for PCI Express because it's requesting a clock signal. So where does that come from? That comes from the seat. Did you just suck a bunch of chips into the air filter? I sucked my shield. They don't need that back for warranty, do they? Okay. What's this? Here we go. PCH, PCI Express, R Comp, and PCI Express, I Ref. What's this? And there's a resistor that goes between PP1VO5, SOSW, PCH, VCC, USB3, pull to PCI, PCH, PCIe, R comp, which then goes to PCIe, I ref. What the? Okay, let's take a look at this. What is that? What is that for? PCIe, R comp. And of course, Paul's software is not giving me the same results in the board view as it does in the schematic. No, I'm kidding. I love Paul. Oh, okay. And that's over, okay, so that's over here. And the other side of this goes straight to the CPU. And fuck. And that's right by this Y1915, which is a clock for something. PCH 24 megahertz crystal. All right, so let's see. What does this area look like? And this is in the upper left corner. <coughs> Never opened it, my... Wait, really? Even the schools are doing this now? Even the... Oh, yeah, I'm sure that resistor fell off by itself. Well, I think we found our problem. There we go. Look at that. What does that look like to you? That looks like someone done screwed up to me. All right, so let's turn on our fume extractor, soldering iron, and get a new resistor there. Today we're not going to be repealing. We're just going to be replacing. No repeal and replace since it seems like this was repealed prior to it arriving here. So I'm going to use the largest soldering iron on Earth because I'm being lazy in terms of grabbing my regular one. And we're just going to put some solder on those pads there. Suck up the, lead, the leaded solder onto the iron. There, bam, beautiful. And we're going to put a new, new resistor on there and see if that's our problem. Paul is such a good sport. Watch this be the CPU. This is the same luck I've had in the past week or so. I am not under any circumstances accepting TCRS's luck is mine. 
TCRS lists repair on eBay. Don't you give me your eBay luck now, kid. <laughs> Don't you give me that. E I used to be on eBay selling board repair a long time ago. <laughs> it, oh, man. If you fix more than one out of 20, you have my utmost respect. Tim, if you are fixing more than one out of 20, I'm dead serious. You have my utmost respect. Boards that I got sent on eBay were garbage. Utter trash. That's a way to learn. It was planted this issue for YouTube. Fake news. I wish. I used to... I plant issues for students all the time. The funny thing about that is that you genuinely don't... Jason, how often do you try to blow something up for a student and it doesn't blow up? I figured out if you just start blowing up the zero under this and just placing them on the board. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, haven't, I usually... I send 20 volts at 10 amps through a resistor rated for a 16th of a watt and it doesn't blow. Does that ever happen to you? I do that with the current sensing around the ISL. The people are too smart for that. So, by the way, I bought myself a Hakko FR810 and a Quick 861. Next week, I plan to do a, rev a detailed review. So, Hakko, being the incredibly smart marketing people they are, rather than create a hot air station that actually has a proper user, interf user interface, they sent me a t-shirt, a t-shirt, an anti-static wristband, a couple of screwdrivers, and a set of tweezers, and said, we feel that you are doing your audience a disservice by not reviewing the Hakko FR810. So guess what, Hakko? I'm going to do my audience a service and tell my audience exactly what I think of the Hakko FR810, just because I like Hakko so much as a company. I've decided to skip reviewing that model because I thought it would be kind of mean to give my opinions on it. But since you asked, I'm going to make sure. So we're going to be comparing the $850 Hakko FR810 to the $275 Quick 861DW next week, and you'll get to see which one I like more. And you may be surprised. So that, that, that is on its way. I want to do a video, because I noticed that my video recommending tools in hot air is actually fairly old, and it's recommending devices that are no longer being made and admittedly, the difference is, and I've heard a lot of good stuff about the Quick. And the thing is, hot air, cheap hot air, used to be complete and utter garbage. Absolutely love your channel, all the information you freely give. Keep up the awesome work. Obi donated five. Thank you. So the, the thing is, cheap hot air, like below 400 bucks, used to be complete garbage. I remember trying the... I remember trying to remove uh, an ISL 6259 with an AT and 858, and then again with some IOE piece of shit in 2011, and it just sat there, like with the IOE. The AT was in 2015 with Jessa, the IOE is 2011. Full temp, full air, 10 minutes, ISL didn't, didn't even melt, didn't come off. But supposedly, the technology's been getting better and the brands have been getting better and it's changed. Because I remember Quick used to be a brand where you would put the hot air thing down on the... You would put it on, and you would leave it on for 10 minutes, and the handle would just start melting. It would, it would just complete crap. But supposedly, the 861DW is a lot better, and if it is a lot better, I would like to give it a fair shake. So by next week, I should have both, and I want to do an in-depth review, interface, how does it handle removing small parts, how fast do they get hot, how does it handle removing, an, so let's say, an SMC, and really get into the nuts and bolts of it. I'm excited about that. All right, so let's see if we get an SSD with this now that we've put that resistor back on. Better have an SSD. Better have a drive. Since it's already repealed, it's a 50% discount on the job. Ha, ha, maybe in Australia. Ha, <laughs> ha. Ah.
What did you do to Time Warner? I don't know. I think I just kept advertising why my streams were failing, and it seems to have motivated them to start giving me proper internet service. That's my only guess. If you look up Nitrocaster on GitHub, you can find the same plugin. So if your stream sucks because of Time Warner, you can install this thing. And I like it. I like it. Blame your ISP. What temperature do you have your air gun set on? I have it set on 11. So this thing doesn't have temperatures on it. It has 1 through 10. And my knob is broken over here. So it goes beyond 10 to 11 on my WHA900 that I've never replaced the heating element on because Weller still hasn't emailed me back six months later to tell me where to find it. So it's, yeah, 11. All right, let's see. Now I can't. Uh, does it see an SSD? Hey, it does. Look, I has Apple logo. I has Apple logo, which means I'm done. I've done my job. What, you want me to test everything? <laughs> what are you, nuts? <laughs> what kind of channel do you think this is? <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that's about that. So random knocked off resistor. Can you imagine? Because this, this is the point I want to I wanna hammer home. Because a lot of people who were new to this, they may have stopped at the capacitor part, and they would have actually taken off each capacitor and tested it. Now, would I have gone back to that if I had never found that resistor? Of course. But am I going to do that? If, if you realize that... A, uh, one specific step in your troubleshooting is going to be a nightmare and you haven't exhausted everything else, save the stuff that's the nightmare for last. Please don't say the word knob and broken in the same sentence. What's wrong? My knob is broken. My knob goes to 11. I like having a knob that goes to 11. I can't buy a new heating element to calibrate it, so I just calibrate it using my knob. I haven't sold Border Pair on eBay since January. I use my mail-in site now. Screw eBay. Well, congrats to TCRS. This is getting more and you're getting more and more legit every day. I should polish my knob. It's been a while since I've cleaned the front of this. Might as well give the knob a little bit of polish on stream. There we go. Don't want my knob to get dirty. Definitely want to get rid of this solder and flux all around my knob. I clean my knob with Windex. It's my approved knob cleaner. You can't put anything on top of the FR810. That's just one of many reasons why the FR810 is a piece of sh I don't want to spoil my review too much. I want to give Hacko what they asked for. I don't want to spoil my review too much. Don't make me spoil my review. Fan spin. Yeah, but it was supposed to be fan spin. It already had fan spin. We already had fan spin. Uh-oh, 36 drop frames. See, that's what I get for talking out loud about it. What resistor was knocked off? The resistor that was knocked off, Chris, was R1500. R1500 by the clock chip that sits between PP1... Let, let's go over. What is it? R1500. This BS over here. Time Warner does not appreciate the knob jokes. Congrats to Tim on parting with flea bases. Chuck in the Twitch chat. I agree. Did you hear from Time Warner again concerning that bullshit about another modem? No, I haven't because that would require calling them and then waiting on hold just to talk to somebody who would increase my blood pressure. I don't want to increase my blood pressure. Did you just donate a dollar for polishing your knob or wouldn't want it to be dirty? Why, thank you. The next thing I want to do after the Hacko review is I wanted to do a Samsung S7 versus a Moto G4 because a lot of, like one of the most common questions I get is which phone to get. And when I recommend the Moto series, people are like, that's too cheap. I can't imagine that being any good. And I, I kind of regret spending as much as I did on this Samsung phone. So I wanted to do a side-by-side -side with the Samsung S7 and the Moto G4. That's going to be coming up soon as well. I'm ex but I'm, I'm, I'm honestly a little more excited about the Hacko review because the Hacko versus Quick, that's been a long time coming. 
I hope they're quick as well. It would be nice to be able to recommend to new people that don't have a lot of money. Because I, I, I feel bad. Like, I used to recommend these stations that were six to $800. And it's not because you know, I'm, I'm an evil asshole. It's because every time I use the $200 station, they just work like garbage. And I know a lot of people can't afford this. And I, you know, I saved up for a long time to get mine. But if there's a $275 station I could recommend, that would be really awesome. I hope it works. Have you tried the 858D clones? They are pretty good. I haven't. I tried the Atten, A-T-T-E-N, 858D, and it was such a piece of shit. I'm, J Jessa remembers me trying that at Practical Border Pair School. It was awful. All right, so this works. That's it for today. As always, I hope you learned something. That is how we troubleshoot. the process. That's the process of troubleshooting the SSD not showing up on a 2013 through 2015 MacBook Air. If you want to buy any of the parts that we use to do these repairs, you want advice from the forum, click the link below. Much appreciated, and see you in the next video.